the Lord's Prayer has become a so very significant portion of our belief and our practice. And it has become a blessing for just about everybody in the Christian world. The last portion of the Lord's Prayer has deep significance, deep theological insights, and so much practical advice. That's what we are going to talk about today in Journey Through the Bible. All right, so let's go to the Bible, to uh, Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to read from the scriptures, verse 13, Matthew 6, 13. The Bible says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. There is a, there is discussion. Um, in regards to this last sentence of the of the Lord's Prayer, and we're not going to deep too deeply into that discussion. I am do I am though going to ad admit that some manuscripts do not have that last portion, and um, this is not the purpose of my of my uh, message today. Whether or not uh, it was in there in the in the early manuscripts, but there is a lot of theologians and a lot of uh, presenters who argue that it was. And, and in any case, and at any rate, the rest of the scripture presents ample evidence of the three items that we are going to talk about today uh, that are applicable to the real life of a Christian. By the way, I want to thank everybody who has already decided to subscribe to our channel and share the link. Thank you so much for that kindness. Share the link and be a multiplier of hope. Share the link and be a multiplier of hope. So we're going to focus on three Greek words in the in the text that appear here in the origin in the original. The first word for yours is the kingdom. The original word used by the biblical writer there is basileia. Basileia. Um, that is a very interesting um, Greek word. That word means kingdom uh it is basically talking about the realm uh, on which a king uh rules with sovereignty so like like he's the king nobody can argue that and that's his territory um it is used especially in the new testament in regards to god's kingdom and very specifically Oftentimes, it's used to talk about God being the king of the uh, of the believer, especially refers to the rule of Jesus, the, the rule of God in, in the believer's hearts. A very special rule that is going to be universal one day, but we Christians have decided to give our everything to God. He is our king. If you want the Lord to be your king, I want to invite you to write in the comments below, God is my king. God is my king. What does that mean? That means that you're giving Jesus, you're giving God the rule over your life. You're giving him the opportunity to be who decides what you do, what you wear, what you eat. Whatever you do is going to be ruled by God. That is the powerful invitation that the Lord's Prayer is, is making us today. So the second word I'm going to talk about today is the word dunamis. Dunamis. For yours is the kingdom and then says the power. The power dunamis. This uh, Greek word dunamis talks about the ability to, to do something. It's power, might, strength. And it specifically talks about two areas at least. Physical power, force, and all that stuff. Energy, meaning uh, you you can do something, but but it also talks about power to do not only natural and physical things, but all, uh, supernatural power, marvelous works, and it's especially talking in many instances in the New Testament talking about God and His ability to do things that we 
cannot do. Remember um, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, so uh, the third word I am going to talk about today in the study of uh, the last sentence of uh, the Lord's Prayer is the word doxa. Doxa is a word that means glory or it's translated glory. This word occurs in the New Testament uh, a good bunch of times and uh, it, it's, uh, it's a word that talks about uh, most of the time about the... Um, a, a divine quality. It talks about honor, renown, glory. Um, it talks about praise. Uh, when it, it is especially manifested in regards to God. Um, I want to invite you to give God the glory. I don't know how to emphasize this too much. The New Testament has so many instances uh, remember Revelation when all the, the 24 elders, the uh, the angels, and even the uh, countless multitude go on their knees, and even, even with, with their faces on the floor, uh, dropping their crowns of eternal life, just giving glory and honor to Jesus, the King of the universe, the Lord of lords, the Lamb that was slain. You know, the entire Bible the entire Bible, the plan of salvation laid from the very beginning of, of, of the world, or even before the foundations of this particular word, world, um, is centered about giving God the honor, the glory, the honor and the glory. So the, the Lord's Prayer talks about three basic things at the very last sentence. The first of them, let me remind you, is the word basileia. Uh, this word means... Uh, kingdom, authority, uh, sovereignty, like the rule that God has over the, over the, over the world. And I'm going to tell you that sometimes there's, 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 there's a pro, there's difficulties, there's political issues, there's, there's, uh, there's the coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. There's issues that are around us. And sometimes we get frustrated because we can't control things in our, in our, in our surroundings. But I want to tell you that God has the kingdom. God has the basileia. God has the kingdom. He is the ruler above all presidents, above all kings, above everything, above the politics of this world. The Lord is the king. Do you believe it? The Lord is my king. Go ahead and write it down there. Not only write it, but live it out in your life. Live it in your life. The second word I did talk about today was the word dynamis, which means God, God has the power. Sometimes uh, people think they don't have the ability to save enough for their first house or to restore their marriage or to do things uh, that they have planned to do. I want to tell you that God has the dynamis. God has the power for yours, says the, the, the Lord's Prayer, is the kingdom, but also the Power. He has the power to overcome those difficult things you cannot overcome in life. And then the third thing I talked about was doxa, glory. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. When you remember that it is only God who deserves the honor, the glory forever, you live your life as somebody who is not requesting glory for themselves. What a powerful uh, thought here. Like, I don't want glory to myself. Only God deserves the glory. Do you believe it? Go ahead and share it with other people. Only God deserves the glory. Only God deserves the glory. Please, in your Christian life, in your walk, in all areas of life, remember these three things. God is the owner, the only one who deserves the honor, the power, and the glory. Let me say it one more time because I didn't say it right. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. The kingdom is the authority to decide over your life. You don't make your own decisions. You decide sovereignly. You decide that God makes the decisions for you. Then second, God has the power when you don't have power. Praise God. God has the power when you feel like you don't have the power. And then third, 
he only him deserves the glory for anything are you a great believer are you a christian since like forever 10 20 years are you just new to church and you are trying to do your best to behave right do you do you keep the commandments of god do you bring others to jesus all the time are you faithful in your offerings and tithes and are you good in every area of your life are you faithful to your spouse are you a good father Guess who deserves the glory? God deserves the glory. Only God deserves the glory. May you give the kingdom to Jesus in your life. May you give him the rule over every decision that you make. May you give him the glory and may he exercise his power in every single area of your life so that you know that you are not alone. God bless you.